Hey there, so in this video I'm going to show you how to replace a keyboard on a MacBook Pro unibody 13 inch model. This is a 81278 uh, 2011 but it doesn't matter, all of them have the same keyboards. If they are US layouts or there will be some models with uh, different layouts. For example tonight I'm going to do the uh, model with the Japanese layout. The difference in between it is mostly the enter key but sometimes you will see a different key like delete key uh, backspace for example on the regular one US layout the backspace is here instead of the delete enter key is completely different so if you try to put a US layout keyboard inside uh, this computer it's not going to fit because of the different type of layouts uh, I will also do um, a regular US layout but the thing is there is no difference it's exactly the same type of repair and exactly the same type of job uh, basically the computer works but it doesn't turn on you can see the light is there on the battery there is some charge but the computer doesn't turn on the thing is with this one uh, there was a spill on it the button went out and this little part of the keyboard here also doesn't work the thing is, when the keyboard suffers a spill, sometimes the computer will stop working completely just because the power button doesn't work, because the power button is a piece of the keyboard. Uh, you can see the little cable goes from there. Um, this I had to order from overseas. I could not find this keyboard here. It came from China. So when you're ordering, be careful what you're ordering. Uh, make sure that you get the layout that you really need. In my case, it's a Japanese layout, but whenever you're replacing the keyboard, first check which layout of the keyboard you need. You might get something that won't properly work with your machine. So we're going to start from the bottom, of course. we got to open up the bottom, take off all the screws, 10 screws that are holding the bottom piece on it. This is considered as a basic repair. You don't have to be an expert in computer repair to do something like this, but you do have to be very careful because uh, to remove the keyboard, it requires removing most of all of the components from the computer, from inside of the computer, so that you can get to the keyboard. Keyboard is under all the components as you will see right now. So keyboard is under all of this. We gotta remove everything. Basically, um, first thing you do is unplug the battery because if the battery has a charge, you might short something out. It's not that easy, but it still can happen. Uh, you will need a torque screwdriver to take out the screws that are holding the fan and the motherboard. Uh, keep in mind that the screws that are holding the motherboard are shorter than the screws that are holding the fan. I know this by heart, but uh, if you're opening it, uh, opening it up for the first time uh, don't mix them up because you will need those long screws to fasten the uh, fan back in when you're done with the repair uh, this computer has a couple of screws missing already so that was quick uh, basically you just need to remove all the connector cables uh, this is the LVDS connector that connects the screen there is a little bracket which we need to take out. For this you will need a Phillips screwdriver. Here we go. Battery indicator and sleep sensor also. If you don't plug this in or rip this. Uh, if you rip this, you will not your computer will not go to sleep. Battery indicator is not that important. But the sleep sensor on it is uh, keyboard. There's the keyboard connector, there's the backlight connector, trackpad, flex cable hard drive flex cable, you can just bend this DVD flex cable and the Wi-Fi flex cable <clears throat> also the speaker I made a mistake, uh, this is not a 2011 model, this is 2010 but it doesn't matter, it's the same for all of them that came out from 2008 2008 is slightly different model but the keyboard replacement is the same until 2012 or at least until they stopped producing the regular MacBook Pro and started doing all the Retina models. Uh, the speaker is being held by two screws, also different length.
keep them separate so that you know where to put the screws back in. Another bracket is under the speaker. This bracket holds the DVD. DVD is being held by three screws. One is here, another one here, and there is one in the front. It always helps to have the screwdriver magnetized because these screws will fall in sometimes, can even fall inside the DVD. You can take out the DVD from the computer. And this repair, you don't need to take out the hard drive, you don't need to take out the battery. Um, the keyboard itself is right under the board. Um, since we took out uh, the DVD and the fan, now we're going to take out the motherboard. Uh, pay attention to the microphone, dig it out slowly so you don't actually rip it when you pull the motherboard out. If you rip it, you'll need to replace it with something, it's a bitch to solder that back on there. Pull out the motherboard slowly and disconnect the DC board. As you can see, the DC board is plugged in here. Just disconnect it, and so. And then you can put the motherboard on the side. The thing is, all these computers, if they're used heavily, depends. Some of them will have a lot of dust underneath. Since you're taking out the motherboard, you might as well clean off the dust. If the if there was a lot of dust and your computer is overheating, you should lift these four screws and take off the heatsink. Put another paste in there, a uh, cooling compound that will help the computer cool down, the motherboard itself cool down faster. Uh, that's already done on this board, but I will just blow out the dust a little bit. There is not much cleaned recently. <coughs> uh, there is a bracket in the middle. This bracket holds the DVD drive. Take this bracket out. You will need to pull it out so you can take out the keyboard. Okay, so important thing, two screws that are holding the power button are here. They are slightly bigger than the screws from the actual keyboard. Keyboard screws are much smaller. Keep them on the side, don't lose them. If you lose them, you will not be able to properly fasten in the uh, power button. And you might have problems, it might sink in when you try to press it. Try to remove the backlight layer without ripping anything sometimes it's gonna be hard you might need to use some heat or you might not do it all depends and this one is not that bad so see if you lift it has three layers it has this little black piece which is the actual backlight it has the LED lamps there is a plastic in between and there is this tape black tape underneath we're gonna remove this and now you see the keyboard. The, this is pretty much the only thing that we need to replace now. Um, the keyboard itself is being held by these little black, black screws. There is about between 90 and 100 of them, depending on the model. Newer model have more, the older model has a little bit less. Either, either way, this is pretty much boring manual labor. You just have to unscrew every single screw. So you can pull out the keyboard and put another one in. Uh, try to keep all the screws, even if you lose one or two, it's not a big deal. Try to uh, kind of put them in spots where the keyboard will be held properly, but don't lose half of them. Don't put them somewhere where you're going to move the computer to clean it and they're all going to fly out from the table because then you will need these screws. Nothing will hold the keyboard down without the screws. There are also computers that have don't have these screws, their uh, keyboards are bolted in like uh, newer Retina models or um, Mabel Cares from 2010 and after that. Uh, these is if you watched one of my previous videos on how to replace a keyboard on 11 inch Mabel Care, um, it still can be done because when you rip out the keyboard it leaves little screw holes that you can actually screw these screws back in but you will not have enough screws you will need to buy additional ones so in case you're attempting something like that it's very similar to this model just depending on the model you're doing it on it might be a little bit more complicated to take the board out like for example retina models have a lot of cables that you can rip but that's something I will do also Eventually, we're going to have one to repair with that problem.
If you end up having a stripped screw, you can't take it out because it, it got rusted or something. Try spraying it a little with WD-40. Uh, that might help. If not, you will have to rip the keyboard and uh, the screw will go through the keyboard, it's fine. And then find a pair of uh, pliers or cutters, small cutters, so that you can cut off the, uh, the screw that got stuck in there. Because when you put back the keyboard, that screw will press up on the keyboard and there will be a hole so the keys won't align properly. For a person who is pretty tech savvy, done a bunch of repairs, taking computers apart, this is a repair that can last about 30 minutes. Uh, for a person who's done this many times, this is a repair that lasts about 15 minutes. Even though you have a, about a hundred screws to take out, it's still not a big deal and not that hard of a repair. You just have to be careful with taking the stuff out from the computer so you don't rip anything, any of the cables. Also, always be careful with the motherboard when you're taking it out. Don't drop screws on the motherboard. Oops, I lost one. That's not a big deal, we'll, we have plenty of those. Uh, don't drop, drop any screws on the motherboard. Uh, something can get shorted out, you can kill the board if it works, if it wasn't damaged by the spill. Some people choose to replace their keyboards because they're just worn out. They got that shiny and glossy look, not like new. Okay, so we got all the screws out. You just lift the keyboard, pull it out, there's this small tape here holding it and rip that off. That's pretty much the old keyboard. Okay, so the new keyboard has a backlight on. I will remove that backlight as well. Because I don't need it in this case, the old backlight is in pretty good shape. Sometimes when you replace the keyboard, the backlight will be as well damaged. It will have uneven light or uh, it won't work at all or it will be very dim. Uh, you can actually see by the backlight. If the backlight seems to have a lot of liquid residue, you should definitely replace it because it might not work when you put back the keyboard in. So as you can see, the keyboard fit in perfectly because we got the layout that we need see the enter key, if I use the US, US layout has an enter key that resembles the shift key, has a different backspace key, has different keys here, uh, the caps lock is actually here, not here, it's a huge difference, so if you have a wrong keyboard, you'll not be able to put it in. Like I said, I'll do a video for a US layout specifically, I just wanted to do this one as well to point it out for people who are not replacing a US layout. Any layout other than US has specifically has to be specifically purchased. Uh, most of European layouts are the same. Asian layouts can be different. Some of them are the same like US. It all depends. Depends from the region and uh, um, Apple changed parts for different different countries and different regions. Now basically, the same thing you did before, screw all these back in. Also don't be worried if the screw sometimes doesn't go in straight, it kind of goes sideways or um, it doesn't screw in properly, you can always pull it out and do it again. These little screws are pretty strong and sharp, so it can even cut through the hole and make a new thread for itself, if need be.
Now I have to give you a heads up on the keyboard repair. Thing is, when you're replacing a keyboard, um, the keyboard that you purchased, you never know if it's 100% functional. You can always buy parts that are DOA, have some defects, problems, whatever. Uh, what I would suggest, plug in the keyboard before you replace it and try to test it. The keyboard will be hanging from the connector, don't pull it, just plug it in and um, kind of flip the computer, see if it turns on, uh, if all the keys work, if possible, test the keys that you're using always, make sure that it works, because sometimes, and it happened to me more than once, I've used the keyboard that was bad, and I learned my lesson, so I test every single time. If the keyboard is bad, then you've got to do this job all over again, and it's a pain in the butt. Because you gotta take out all of these screws and disassemble the whole computer all over again. On this computer, this is probably one of the longest repairs you can do, just because of the screws. If you watch one of my previous videos, um, I mentioned, and I will mention that in every repair make the surrounding fit you properly, make yourself comfortable so you can do the repair properly, don't try to make the computer, computer comfortable, like especially when you're replacing screens on them, don't be afraid to flip the computer upside down, sideways, um, hold it with the hand while it's kind of hanging off of the table or something like that. As long as you're comfortable doing the repair, the repair will go well. If you are stiff, if you are cramped up and you do the repair, something might go wrong. So you might damage something, you, you might end up with a very expensive problem if you damage something inside the computer. And I've seen that a lot of times. I've seen a lot of people try to do the repair that they're not capable of doing. They never held a screwdriver in their hands. They think they can fix something so they can go cheaper, not pay somebody who knows how to do it and then they end up paying triple the price. With this one, it's pretty much the computer is upside down all the time, so there's not much you can do about it. So I am going to put the old dust out. There's a little bit of dust. I'll blow that out. I'm going to put the old backlight in there because it's perfectly fine. It doesn't need to be replaced. I already turned off the, on this computer with a different keyboard and everything worked fine. And the backlight was on properly. So <coughs> excuse me, I got a little sick. So when you put the keyboard back on, um, press down these edges so it kind of glues itself back in place now make sure you position the power button properly in there because that's the last thing you're screwing back in don't forget you have those two different screws if you lose them it's going to be impossible to find them anywhere to replace them with something you will need to buy a pair of them and that's not going to be fun Let's put the bracket back on. Now assembling the computer back is a pretty quick job. We've done the hardest part. Here's the DVD. Don't forget three DVD screws. If you don't screw the DVD in properly, the DVD that you put in might not come out all the way or it might get stuck on the little DVD door on the side. Okay, then there is this bracket which we need to put back in. 
with two screws holding it. This bracket holds the speaker down and also holds the screw that holds the bottom piece. So you need this bracket. Screw the speaker back in. You probably noticed that I'm doing the the way how I took it apart. I'm doing it backwards. This is how it's easier for me. It doesn't really matter what you put back in the computer first. It's pretty much the same. Now there is a board. Uh, first thing, th this is not easy to put in for people who never took it out. First thing you put in is the DC board. You don't want to plug it in without, I mean, put back the board without plugging in the DC board. Be careful so you don't pin, uh, crush the pins inside. Push the connector straight in and you're good to go. Align the motherboard on the back like this under the angle and start pulling out a little by little all these connectors. You have here keyboard, backlight, trackpad, speaker, Wi-Fi and hard drive. It doesn't really matter which order you put these back in as long as the power is unplugged. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because a lot of people blow up their backlight fuse when the power is plugged in and they plug in the LVDS connector which is the screen connector. If you don't plug that screen connector in properly you will short out the last pins which are the backlight pins and that will cause in uh, fuse being blown you need to replace it and that ends up to be a motherboard repair. Now pay attention to the to this piece here the screw that you're putting in make sure that there is no cable holding uh, being squeezed under the screw in this little bracket if that happens the computer won't charge so make sure that also is clear and then screw in the screw okay now you can put anything back in if you want you can still leave the battery connector out until you plug everything in nothing will get shorted like that so you're safe all the cables are gonna go back in the same way they were it's easy you cannot mix them up all of them are made to be plugged in differently they're all different connectors okay let's screw in the fan first fan has the longer screws again I'm reminding you don't put these long screws somewhere else even though you'll be surprised they might fit in these other screw holes you will need them to hold the fan especially this longest one so that it will reach again I have just a couple of screws for this motherboard somebody opened this before and hasn't put all the screws back in okay, let's put this back in and the keyboard and the backlight connector, both of them need to be pushed back in. Let's put the latch back on so it holds the, the cable. Same thing with this. Put the screw, this is sometimes not easy to pull in. Put the screwdriver behind it and then just push the cable in and it will go in instantly. Let's just start it up, turn it on, make sure it works. There's some dust. Clean the here we go, there's the light, here turned on. Now, very important part is to actually test the keyboard after you're done with the repair. Um, okay, the button works, but what if some of the keys don't work? So we're going to turn it on, boot it up, and test the keys individually, mainly the keys that actually type out the symbols, numbers, the upper keys, function keys, uh, also test the caps key, shift key, command option key. I've already tested this, this keyboard so I know it works, but we'll do it again just in case.
Okay, you can open anything, um, sticky notes or whatever. Make sure that every key works. This computer is in is typing in US layout even though it's a Chinese key uh, Japanese keyboard. Okay. Everything is good. Make sure you have sound. Make sure your keyboard backlight works. It works. It's good. And that's pretty much it. You're done. Um, I'm just gonna put the bottom screws back on and the computer is ready. That's how you replace a keyboard on a 1278. In this case it was uh, an international layout. And that's pretty much it. See you in the next one.